Hey everybody and welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Bunch of car parts today, really excited about today's project. Before we get into it, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, like if you enjoy this type of content. Also make sure to check us out on Instagram, Tens underscore Motorsports. We're gonna be doing some evil energy. As you can see here, lots of evil energy products. What we've got here is a whole bunch of connectors. So these would be AN6. And uh, we'll be opening all those up and looking at everything here in just a moment. We've got 100 micron filter, a 30 micron filter, and then a fuel pump. Uh, we've got the mounting brackets for all three of those. And then those two boxes over there, I believe, are the hoses. So this is going to be going on the white race car. This car right here. The tank is not here yet. This is just the fuel pump and fuel filter setup. So we're going to get this installed on the car. We do in a fuel tank later on and a regulator. Really excited to get this done. Obviously, I will have the link to this down in the description below. Let's get all these unboxed. Good brand, good stuff. Link in the description again. And uh, this will also allow us to run, hopefully, some E85 in the race car. See if we can't bump up those horsepower numbers just a little bit. So, yeah, the exciting part. Let's get these unboxed. So here is everything unboxed and there is a lot to go through here. So, so you've got your 100 and your 30, you have the mount for that one, mount for this guy, mount for the fuel pump, 40 feet of AN6 fuel lines, 40 feet of it. So you can take whatever route you think you need to get from your fuel cell to your fuel pump, your filters up to the regulator and over to the fuel rail. So I've got seven of these, which is your line to uh, other component adapter. I've got three of these, which are kind of like a, a 45 degree angle. So if you need to come out of the fuel pump or the fuel cell at an angle, these are all of the hardware for the 30, all the hardware for the 100, and then this is hardware for the fuel pump. Fuel pump needs to be put on a relay, preferably. My wife's car is on a 30 amp relay. Um, oh, and they gave me a ton of stickers. <laughs> Every single item that we got came with a sticker, so I'll have to put those um, somewhere. Now, before we start putting all of these parts into my car, I want to talk about my wife's race car. And once you do a project a few times, you start to learn what, what does and doesn't work. Hers isn't set up like horribly bad. And we're gonna talk about hers for just a bit. And then I'm gonna talk about the changes that are gonna be done to mine that'll make mine a little bit better. And then eventually the changes we'll be doing to her car because your first iteration of something, especially when there's not a lot of information online about it, your first iteration isn't always the best. So I'm gonna go over hers real quick and then uh, I will show where all of my stuff's gonna be installed. And then I actually wanna talk about some of the quality differences. The stuff in her car, uh, besides the tank, the tank is actually Evil Energy. And the reason we went with that is because I had a name brand, like big name brand, expensive name brand tank in there and it leaked and leaked and leaked and I was not very happy with it. Her pump and filters and hoses are still all big expensive name brand where Evil Energy is this much more affordable company. And I didn't realize this until I was setting up the camera and getting ready for this little segment. Their hoses are braided and these ones aren't. So more expensive doesn't always mean more better. So let's go into her car real quick, show what's going on and show some of the differences that we'll be doing when we go to install this on my car. So here is her fuel cell and her pumps and filters are just underneath that shipping blanket. And uh, I'll get to that in just a moment. Her fuel tank is sat side to side. So 
it comes out over here, runs up to the fuel pump. I've learned that that's not the best orientation. If you're running a surge tank, it doesn't really matter, which is what we're gonna be eventually doing. But until then, we would like to rotate the tank so it's pulling from the back. You accelerate the, all the fuels in the back, you go right or left, uh, it's in the middle. Right now, if you turn to the right, all of our fuel sloshes over to the left-hand side and it can starve the tank. So we're gonna put it in the back, that way under left and right cornering, we're still getting some fuel. And then under acceleration, you're getting fuel. And then under braking, which you're not normally using a lot of fuel for, it's probably gonna starve a little bit. But until we get our surge tanks, that's the plan. We have here our return line. This is her breather. So this runs out, there's a vent over here on the left-hand side of the car, and it actually runs out into like the wheel well. So you definitely wanna make sure your tank is vented. Um, you can see the rest of the fuel pump and fuel filter. So let's get a better view real quick. Now the reason we've got this fuel pump system sitting underneath a packing blanket is because it is so loud you can't talk to your passenger. Stupid loud. But you need to be mindful of that. Our case here, this is actually still sitting in the trunk of the car. So just where that pink, see that pink ends, we'll be putting a bulkhead delete plate there. So hopefully that'll make it a little bit quieter to have the fuel pump back here. But I am, I am seriously debating whether to move this to the outside of the car and maybe preemptively moving the evil energy one out to the outside of the car and then I just don't have to worry about it whether it's noisy or not. So here's that access plate. There is a rubber gasket on the top. We've just cut that. One runs in and then one runs back. That's the fuel return line. Just above this is the relay. We are gonna be running a relay in my car as well. That's a 30 amp relay. You can just run this straight to a switch. I would advise against that. We're gonna be putting in a relay and those are pretty simple to install. So up here is the only part of the entire system that will be unchanged when we go to do my car. So you've got your line in through the regulator and then back over to the fuel rail. This system here is up really nice and high. Keep it away from the exhaust manifold. It's all wrapped, uh, there's some heat protection. And then there is your return line that runs back to the fuel cell. At no point do we cross over the exhaust up here where we're going back and forth from this side of the car, driver's side to the passenger side, was all done above the transmission and away from the exhaust. All right, so the back of my trunk here and uh, lots of room. Sorry, it's kind of dusty dirty. I don't get in the back of the trunk very often, but I guess that'll be changing here now that I'm putting in a fuel cell and have to open this up every single time I fill the car, but what I'd really like to do, I would really like to put my pump and filter and everything back where my wife's is. So if I could go filter, pump, filter, that would be fantastic. So I think before we do anything else, let's make sure that the Evil Energy pump isn't super loud. Let's check that out real quick. Battery's right here. So let's pull out the pump and turn it on. Here's the pump, got a couple test leads here. Let's see if this is quieter. Okay, <laughs> I'm happy, but I'm also mad. I'm happy this is quieter, but it makes me really mad that I spent the kind of money that I did purchasing the one for my wife's car for it to be so loud. You know what? Um, just to give it benefit of the doubt, because it's, it's noisiest when it's dry like this, but I don't want to run it dry very long. So I'm actually going to put it in its holder because I know that it's gonna, it's gonna vibrate off the metal. You know, if you're holding it like this, it's gonna be quieter than if you put it down. Let's put it in its holder here. I think these are the same ones. I'm gonna put it in this, and I'm, I'm gonna put it uh, against the floor, and this will actually vibrate more than up there because this is mostly hollow underneath here. And uh, we're gonna see how loud it is or isn't. And then I'm going to hold this down, replicating, you know, a couple bolts, and we'll see how loud it is. And then I'll also get a shot of my wife's car, her fuel pump running. I don't know how well that came across on camera. This is already substantially quieter and this is empty. Like I said, when you start putting some fluid through it, this will actually quiet up a little bit. Um, next thing we're gonna be doing here is I would like to show how to put the fuel lines onto these. So this is a little bit different style connector than 
the one in the other car. These are actually kind of like a um, friction fit. Um, so you tighten it down onto the hose, which is nice. And I feel like these would leak slightly less. 40 feet of hose, 40 feet, which is enough to do this project like twice, which is really nice because if I remember right, I think I had to buy some more when we were doing my wife's car. So this kit's everything you need. You shouldn't have to be running back and forth to the store every five minutes. So now I'm going to be installing this on here. I just wanna show everybody how this works. So for example, if you go over here to the AN10, when you spin this off, so these are some of the AN10 lines that I was using for the catch can systems. This actually fits inside there. And so what you do is you'd slide this over top. I've, I've got this frayed out right now, so I don't, I'm not gonna sit there and fight it, but you'd slip this over top until it bottoms out. And then when you push it on there, you can see that that actually slides in. Okay, so there's only two pieces to a style like this. This one here, as you pull it apart, you realize there are three pieces. So it's super simple. And uh, I think this style actually helps with fraying hoses because this kind of stuff here has, it's got actual little wires in it and they can get caught and they'll poke you and it's kind of frustrating. Anytime you cut this, you wanna make sure that you put some tape down so, the, so it doesn't fray, so just like it is now. So we're gonna be sliding this on. And so this actually goes all the way over where most of the time, like that one I just showed you, the AN10 would stop like right there and it wouldn't actually let you push the line any further. I'm gonna push this all the way back. Then from here, we're actually gonna purposefully fray this. And this piece here fits in between the fray, so this actually goes over the plastic inner on that hose. So now at this point, we've got this over, and then we actually purposefully push the fray aside and made that puff out and then I push this in and then now we'll slide the whole thing in together is as you thread this on it just squishes everything together once you can't do it anymore by hand we'll get a crescent wrench in here and we'll tighten this up the rest of the way sorry kind of hard to do on camera but <clears throat> I'm not completely bottomed out, but I'll bottom it out here in just a little bit. And then as you can see here, it's not going anywhere. Real nice and tight. So I wanted to show that because this is slightly different than the other styles. You wouldn't think that there's a ton of different styles, but you got this style here, this style here, and then you've got the other one where uh, it's ribbed and you slide it on and you just put those like permi clamps on it, the single use clamps. Thanks again so much for watching. Evil Energy, good stuff. We'll get that cell and regulator in and we will mount everything up permanently. Everything linked in the description below and we will see everybody in the next video.